Jedi business. Go back to your drinks. This is Jedi business. If you don't want to get a how-to guide for Jedi, then go back to your drinks. We're giving you a comprehensive, full guide to Jedi. We're talking gear, expertise builds, buffs, ability rotations for PvE and PvP. So, untuck your shirts. Stop yelling! Let's get started. First things first, credit to Stefan, who gave us this build with the assistance of Vulture from the V the Legend YouTube channel. These dudes, they, they straight up shred, and there's nobody better to learn from. So I'm going to be their very weird uh, prosthesis, we'll call it. I'm the prosthesis for these guys. I will be the mouthpiece for what they have to say about building Jedi. Philosophy is important when building your Jedi. Ideally, you want a build and gear that's going to be flexible in both PvE and PvP. So this is going to cover what we consider the best all-around build. Something that, depending on whatever scenario, you can switch a buff or food to offset any deficiency. With that in mind, let's talk build. Let's talk expertise. Survivability is key. We're going tanky. We're going to go full light side Jedi. Luke Skywalker, he was right. Just start clicking all of the boxes in the light side Jedi path. Now under the general tab, we're putting one point in strength, two in constitution, and two in agility. As a light side Jedi, you never want to worry about stamina. We're also going to be putting four points in alacrity and four in premonition. As you can see, we're going to put one point just so you could get us into the saber block tab. And then we're going to put all three into saber block. Once again, this will keep you alive. Your offense will be boosted by gear, buffs, and, and whatnot. Speaking of gear, the first thing that you want to do is get a set of clothes outfitted with triple modded level 35 skill attachments. Literally, the first thing that you want to do. You can get slotted clothing at any level, provided that you have the credits to pay up. The stats you choose are dependent on your playstyle, but we like to go with agility, constitution, and precision. This gives us plenty of defense, health, and a good chance of critical hits. The build's also very versatile and will work well whether you play as light side Jedi or dark side Jedi, and also for both PvE and PvP. For Jedi, you'll want pants, boots, gloves, and a bandolier all with 35s. Now, a lesser known fact is that Jedi can wear leg armor. Primus Composite is ideal since these give us maximum possible energy protection, and as a melee class, you're generally going to have more problems defending energy damage, so that's important. You're going to also want to purchase some exotic attachments. They are special stat modifiers which are applied to your shirt and your lightsaber. Choice, again, is down to the playstyle, but we like to go with critical hit increased lightsaber damage and glancing blow increase. In a good build, each element is going to complement each other. So precision on 35s, for example, helps us to increase our critical chance in a combination with the other critical chance exotics. Once we have our basic clothes and armor figured out, it's time to start working on your holocron collections. It's time to start grinding. So, completing the Meditative Discipline collection will grant you the ability to meditate. And this will allow you to buff yourself in one of three different ways for a 30 minute duration. Completing the Waste Pack collection grants the belt of Bobo? Bobo Boss? It's Bodo Boss, but I mean, I, I don't know where they came up with that name. It's Star Wars. The belt functions as a 65 item backpack while still permitting the wearer to equip a bandolier outfitted with 35s. Once both collections are complete, then you'll be able to meditate at any four shrine to receive the Shatterpoint Cloak, or the Cloak of Hate. You've just leveled up. Next up is your heroic jewelry set. There are a number of different choices, but the Guardian gives the best defensive boost for Jedi. The more pieces you earn, the larger total bonus. 
The bonuses for the respective number of pieces is shown in the pictures below. Now these are purchased using tokens for the completion of the heroic instances. Let's talk buffs. Now buffs are everything in Star Wars Galaxies Legends. Stacking as many buffs together will give you the best advantage. In this part we'll cover all of the buff items, or items that provide you temporary buffs. Each of the items can be used together with only one or two exceptions, which we will cover. The first and one of the most important things that you can have in this game is the Mustafarian Injection. It gives you 100 strength, 100 precision, and another DPS builder, which is important when you are stacking defense. DPS is good to have. The Gackle Bat Familiar. In this character, you're going to want to choose the Gackle Bat Familiar. It gives you 40 strength and 40 precision. Remember, if this is the character that you're going to be using mostly for PvE, then you want to choose Gacklebat for this bad boy. Another thing that you're going to definitely need is the Tactical Serum Fs, and these can be had at any officer supply drops. You can find them anywhere on Moss Eisley. They're always calling out. You can group with them and pick up some wonderful buffs. It gives you plus 100 constitution, 7% crit chance, 5% dodge, dodge. 7% action cost reduction and 7% damage increase. Holy crap. Shard of the Serpent for resistance to damage effects over time. Uh, layer Crystal, Constitution plus 75, Luck plus 50, Critical Chance plus 5, Damage Output, Output, wow, Damage Output plus 10%. But will it actually give me a buff to being able to speak? Probably not. This also gives you a glancing blow increase of 5%. Shard of the Retaliation is Constitution plus 200, Luck 200, and Agility 200. That is a quick burst item. Another one that you're going to want to have, it's not 100% necessary, but it is very valuable, is the Sprint Stim. It'll allow you to run at a similar speed to Force Run for a duration of a minute. This is very, very useful, especially in PvP. Food buffs. We're talking Rancor Aid. It gives you plus six resist to snare. Obviously, very important when it comes to PvP. Breath of Heaven, 211 constitution and plus three dodge chance. Entertainer buffs. So, anytime you go to an entertainer, you're always going to want to get full armors. And whether it's PvE, you're going to want to go with Glancing Blow. If it's PvP, you're going to want to get full armors plus crit defense. This is how you improve your range for defense of all incoming attacks in, like I said, PvP or PvE. Now, let's talk power-ups. Power-ups are a buff which can be applied to your armor, shirt, and weapon for further increases. On a Jedi cloak, it will be considered as a piece of armor. A variety of different power-ups are available, but we like to use the Glancing Blow for PvE and Critical Hit Defense for PvP. Obviously, by the highest that you can afford to get the best results. Let's talk a little bit about offensive abilities. All of the offensive abilities that we have here, as shown in the picture, are run in slots 1 to 4 for fast firing. So saber attacks go 1 to 3, and both the range attacks are on 4. Now guardian strike is on shift 1. It's an auto attack used to pull aggro from teammates, but it actually it can use it to cause additional damage. So obviously if you're waiting for one of your abilities to fire up, for minimal a stamina cost you can add a little bit extra damage to your arsenal now saber reflect and mind trick are also in there mind trick is actually pretty interesting because it isn't just used to lose aggro in pve in pvp firing mind trick at your opponent actually has a chance to debuff them for a minus 50 strength and a minus 50 precision for a short period of time Heals are on 5, with heals and stims on shift 5. Saber block on 6, force run on 7. And we also have a hermetic touch and a shard of serpent for dealing with damage over time effects. 
So I'm actually running uh, power buffs, which is the layer crystal, shard, retaliation, a dented IG, a droid head on 8, 9, and 10. And of course, since these run out pretty quick, we have Flavor of the Elders and Tactical Stims on 11. The final slot, I like to put our two weapons that we can choose between both the Saber Sword or Saber Blaster. That's a lot of words. Let's have a couple quick notes here. Now, many feel that strength is the way to go, and yes, strength is important because it adds block and other important attributes. However, in this build, we prioritize crit. Crit adds a bit of DPS to the preservation build, but it also greatly helps the defense because crit directly relates towards your parry, which directly relates to your most important defensive skill, Saber Block. So there you have it. This is everything that you need to know about how to build what we consider the perfect all-around Jedi. The proof is in the footage, but let us know if we're missing something. Give us your tricks down in the comment section. Give us your tricks and build advice down in the comment section. Thanks again to Stefan and also to Vulture. If you like the video, like the video. We'd also really greatly appreciate if you'd subscribe so that you could be part of our awesome little Nerf Herder community. We're always interacting and getting great ideas with our awesome Star Wars Galaxies friends. We really appreciate you. In fact, some would say that we love you in a weird way from Weird Gaming Adventure. And I am Joshua from Weird Gaming Adventure, and I am a scruffy-looking Nerf Herder. See you in the next Star Wars Galaxies video.